Hello boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick, Maine for another edition of Karen Reads. The book I have for you today is called Hannah Hashimoto, Sixth Violin. The story is told by Sherry Oigaki. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. She's written other books and she was inspired by her grandfathers, one who was a violinist and one who was what she calls a gifter of fireflies. I wonder what that means. It's illustrated by Kin Leng, who was born in Shanghai, China, and moved to Montreal, where she lives now. When Hannah Hashimoto announced that she had signed up for the talent show and that she would be playing the violin, her brothers nearly fell out of the tree. That's just loopy, said Kenji. You're still a beginner. Stop kidding, said Koji. You can barely play a note. It's a talent show, Hannah. You'll be a disaster. Hannah squared her shoulders and took her violin and bow inside, leaving her brothers laughing like monkeys in the tree. She pulled out the strings, letting them twang. It was true that she was still the beginner. She'd only been to three lessons. The first time Hannah had held a real violin had been that summer while visiting her grandfather in Japan. <clears throat> long, long ago, her grandfather had been part of a great symphony orchestra in Kyoto. Oji Chan had been second violin and had once played in front of the imperial family. Oji Chan played every morning. From his study, the clear bright notes would drift upstairs through the shoji screen doors to where Hannah slept on sweet smelling tatami mats and coax her awake as gently as the sunshine. Oji Chan usually played classical pieces by Mozart or Mendelssohn or Bach. But in the indigo evenings, while Hannah and her brothers ate ice cream and oranges, Oji Chan would sit on the porch and play requests. Hannah always asked for a song about a crow calling for her seven chicks. Whenever Oji Chan played it, Hannah would feel a shiver of happy sadness ripple through her. Oji Chan didn't just play songs, he could also make his violin chirp like the crickets that Hannah tried to find in the tall grasses. He could pluck the strings to mimic the sounds of the raindrops on the oil paper umbrella that Hannah twirled during summer storms. And when the first fireflies emerged at twilight, O.G. Chan could compose a melody that seemed to make them dance higher and glow brighter than ever before. At the end of each day, as Hannah lay with her head resting on a cool buckwheat pillow, Oji Chan would play a lullaby 
so soothing that sleep would fall over her like a blanket. On their last day together, Hannah told O.G. Chan that she wanted to learn to play the violin. And when Hannah got home, her parents agreed that she could. Now Hannah was practicing not just for lessons, but for the talent show too. Hannah practiced every day, just like O.G. Chan, and every day her brothers fled the house with covered ears, complaining about the terrible noise. She practiced in front of her parents, who listened with care as they washed and dried the dishes. She practiced in front of her dog, Jojo, who cocked his head and sometimes growled at the strange sounds that she made. And she practiced on her own in front of an old photo of Oji Chan from his symphony days. Alone, Hannah could pretend she was performing in front of an audience so appreciative they called for encore after encore. The day of the talent show arrived and the school auditorium thrummed with excitement. Backstage, Hannah waited with a walloping heart. A dozen acts, including five other violinists, had already gone before her. Finally, Hannah heard the Master of Ceremonies call her name. As Hannah walked onto the stage, her violin tucked under her arm and girl bow gripped tight in her hand, an oceanic roar filled her ears. Things seemed to be moving in slow motion, and for one dizzying moment, Hannah thought, Kenji and Koji were right. This is going to be a disaster. She wished she could turn into a grain of rice and disappear into a crack between the floorboards. She could hardly see with the spotlights in her eyes. Yet, as Hannah looked out into the audience, certain faces appeared to her as if through a telescopic lens. She could see her brothers melting into their seats. She saw her best friend Jazz giving her two thumbs up. And there, her smiling mother and her father, camera in their hand. Hannah held the breath then ballooned her cheeks before letting it out. With a whoosh, the roaring in her ears receded. Then, as everyone seemed to disappear behind the light, shining down on her like a moonbeam, she remembered. Gamba Roriono, Hana Chan. Do your best, her grandfather had told her. Oji Chan would be cheering for her. And there you can see him in the audience as though he were in the audience. Hannah swallowed her nerves like medicine and leaned toward the microphone. She would just do her best. This is the sound of a mother crow calling her chicks, she said. She placed the violin under her chin, held her bow in position, and played three raw, squawky notes. This is the sound of my neighbor's cat at night. She dragged the bow across the strings, 
and the violin yelled in loud protest. This is the sound of rain on a paper umbrella. Hannah plunked the strings for a soothing plump, plump, plump. As Hannah continued to play all the special sounds she had practiced, the air around her came alive with buzzing bees and lowing cows and squeaking mice and croaking frogs. Finally, as the last sound effect trailed away, Hannah tucked her bow and violin under her arm. And that, she said to the audience, is how I play the violin. And she took a great big vow. Later, after dinner, Kenzie surprised Hannah by asking for an encore. Make that funny cow sound again, he said. Then Koji said, make that crazy cat sound too. So Hannah did. And when her mother and father and brothers all laughed, she happily played her sounds again. Perhaps next year, Hannah would be able to form one of O.G. Sean's favorite pieces. But for now, Hannah played a little melody she had been practicing. Remember it from Night's Lose by Dancing Fireflies. She imagined that the notes would drift out through the window, past the bright rabbit moon and beyond, and O.G. Chan would hear them and smile. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, this is Karen Lee signing off.